Hello lovelies and welcome back to Mama G Gear. It's Mama G here and today we're going to create something on the fly. So this is an unconventional tutorial. Yes, so I have five skeins of this Northland spiral. Super pretty, got it from Hirschner's. And I bought several colorways um, and I bought five skeins of each. So I wanted to use this up because this is really, really gorgeous. This is Autumn uh, Multi. It's a five bulky, 100% acrylic, and there's 142 yards or 130 meters per skein. And made in Turkey, machine wash. I wash most of this stuff in uh, um, the washing machine anyway. But anyway, that's the yarn we're going to use. And I've already started something. And then I thought, well, you know, I wanted to create on the fly here uh, a beanie hat. So I thought, why not pop on the video, show you and create with me. But um, moreover, because I wanted to show you how I do the rims and why I start my hats from the rim up. Okay, first, this is what I have already made, obviously, because you're seeing it finished. Well, it's not quite finished. It's just a hoodie. And I got the cutest little pom-pom on there. Got these pom-poms from Timu. I was, I am really impressed. It's a nice pom-pom. I don't remember how much they were. It was a package of so many for so much, and I couldn't tell you. But, yeah, these were from Timu. I'm, I'm actually, I thought, let me give it a shot, and I'm happy with that. All right, so this is a hood, and, whoop, balls are rolling here. Um... This is the bottom part. This would be, you know, along the neckline. And what I've done thus far, I've not cut and cut off this and tied it yet because I'm still in the process of figuring it out. So I tried, I said, yeah, instead of going round and round and then stitching up the back, I like to try to do like that one sweater I made where I did not cut and tie anything. I went one continuous, continuous strand of yarn and made a pullover sweater which the sleeves came out a little funky but yeah that was well I just did it to see if I could and figure it out I like to figure stuff out and again if you don't know I don't know how to follow patterns and I have a difficult time even with tutorials so I just like to make my own stuff up anyway come along with me for the ride of, of crazy inventions so with the hood what I did was I did a chain real simple chained like I, I'm going to say 40 I don't know might have been 55 there's a 40 and there's a 55 somewhere in this whole thing here but and I did the chain and then when I got to the top I added one and how I judged to how long long the chain needed to be was when I did the chain I held this I want this to be at the very back of my neck back of my head and I want this to sit comfortably on the top of my head so I held that the, th the yarn, the chain, in that area, realizing that when I come back with a stitch, it's going to shorten that chain. All right, that's how I judged the length of this chain. So you might want to, you could do, a, do it a little bit and then hold it up to your head and see how it works out to get whatever. And write this stuff down. I always forget to write things down. So once I did the chain going up, I just came down along one side with a single crochet. Yes, yeah, I chained. Oh, I chained this way. I my bad. Okay, again, unconventional tutorial. All right, so I chained going this way, and then added a stitch, came up one side of the chain with a single crochet, added a stitch, or you don't have to come down the other side of the single crochet to this point and that from that point on you're going to chain one and go up the next side and then go around without an increase and then come down the other side and you're going to weave it and then go back and you could tell a little bit maybe by here's the chain the stitches and you could tell kind of with the colorway but then you're going to loop around chain one go back up this side and continuously go and you're going to end up with no tying in here because it's you've already 
finished the, the tying in part so you don't have to you know do it in a long rectangle and then stitch up the back that eliminates that so I kept going kept going kept going until I tried it on and this width worked good where it comes a little bit over the front of my face so then I came down to the bottom and did a single crochet along the bottom and then I did a double crochet which this part here I'm going to weave a, a long chain in and out and make a drawstring to tie it around my neck and then since I have five skeins of this this was less than a skein this is what I have left of this skein so I will have enough to attach a scarf to this I will not attach it all the way to the front I'll probably start back here and attach it and then stop equal and opposite on that and attach it to this point so that this front part if you don't if you just have it hanging as a uh, you know a hood excuse me it won't be all like the the thing won't be this won't be up to your neck the scarf won't be all the way up underneath your chin it'll have a little bit of space there but you can tie the scarf to make it there if you want it I hope that made sense all right so that's what I've already done so I've already finished the hoodie and if you bounce that's because animals because we're crocheting with cats um, the the little one is on the bed all right so now what I'd like to show you up oh, let's find the crochet hook do you know where I put that up there okay so now what I want to do is make a beanie and this was a five weight you know let's look and see I'm using a 5.5 .5 eye hook and I never check to see what the re recommended hook size is I believe it says five millimeter yeah five millimeter crochet hook and 6.5 millimeter needles for knitting yeah hopefully this year I'll learn how to knit as well all right so let's just take this what I do I, I haven't decided even what stitch I'm going to do yet for this hat but that's like I said it's just I make it up as I go along all right if you don't know how to do there, there's many many ways to do this slip knot I wrap it around tuck it pull it through and there you go and this this might be simple for most of you but just in case this might be you know the first crochet video you watch for some unknown reason <laughs> okay so now let's do we're going to do a six chain with rim all right so we're going to chain six one if you don't know just kind of have your loop wrap it around two some people will wrap with this hand that's three I just dig in and turn four five six and I am making them a little bit loose because when you do the stitch it it'll it just trust me on that one I just make it a little loose it's easier to work with <laughs> okay plus one this is your turning chain you're not gonna you're not going to chain into that now you see the V I hope because I can't see what I'm showing you so I'm hoping that I'm in camera for you um, the first V we're just going to leave because that's our turning turning chain but see how there's a V and with all right so with the hood when I finished the chain I went into I came down on this side of the uh, chain and then as I went around I came back up on the other side of the V but for this we're going to not go into the V part we're going to go into the loops in the back see that little loop there so the first loop we're going to ignore because that's the turning chain and just going to do single crochet so stick your loop in there your hook in there pull it through again I kind of go loose I, I like the rims to be a little loose because you want it to stretch and be comfortable so that was one next loop is two I'm not going to bore you by doing all of this on camera but just in case you don't know how to do this all right so that's three that's four that's five and then the last one is six and we're not going to worry about this tail because we're going to weave that in when we join the two ends together 
I, I like to weave as I go or tuck as I go because it's a pain at the end. That's, you, know, you finish a project, then you got to weave all the ends, and you all know how that is. It's like, oh, no. It's like doing the dishes after Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, so we have six, six of those. Now we're going to chain one, turn our work. To come back up, the very first chain and the very last chain, you're going to go through both loops. You're going to go right underneath that V on every single stitch, every single turn. So there's our first one, but we went through both. Now we're going to, the stitches in between those two, <coughs> excuse me, are going to be back loop and front loop, and we're going to alternate. So now we're going to start with the back loop. So I'm only going in, see the V here? I should have used a lighter yarn for this, but this is just unconventional. But see the V? We're going to just go, oh, go into the back. Then to the next one. Oop. This is a furls hook. I like the furls hook because they have that pointy tip. And for me, I like that because I could, I find like I could dig into the loops better. Now we're back to the last one and we're not going to go into the back. We're going to go through both and finish it off there. And we're going to chain one. And then now we're, this is the back. I tend to put a stitch marker on the back side. And now this way, the very first one, again, first and last, you're going to go through both, regardless of what you're doing on that, that uh, round or that row. So we went through both. And now I want to keep all the stitches into the back. So now instead of going on that front loop, we're going to go to that back loop. So we did the one. There's two. Three. I need more yarn. <laughs> Battling with the hank there. All right. Three. And if you went like, oh no, I don't remember what number I am, just count here. You got one, two, three. And then again, we're in the back. Three. Four. Five. And our rows are six stitches. And then through both. So there's our sixth. And I like to pull. I don't like to make that tight. I want this to have give. So that's six, chain one, and now we're back to the back side. So first one is going in through both. Second, and I kind of like will put my hand on the top loop so it's easier to find that back loop only. So that's two, three, four, Five, and then go through both. Chain one, turn your work, go through both. And I, like you see, there's a nice loose stitch there. Now we're going back to the back. So now the second one is the back loop only. And then on the last stitch, go through both. And you don't have to count every row, but it is if you're new at this, it is smart to count occasionally because you could forget one or add one accidentally and then you don't even realize it and it's really wonky. It's really wonky. All right, so the first is through both. Now we're on the back side, so we're just going to go into the closest to you loop. Two, three, four. Well, it's five because I didn't count that first one. Ooh, hair. That happens in the house of animals, and then through both. And I'm not going to do all of it, but I'm just going to show you. Do you see the little stitch definition there? Kind of a little rib rib look. And then this side, it still doesn't look bad on this side. You could use either side when you're done, but um, that's the back side, and that's the front side. All right, so I'm going to continue to do this off camera, and, and then when I get to the... What I do is I'll hold it up to my head and see how it fits and feels around the, the rim part of your head, you know, if you're going to wear a hat over your ears. And then when I get it to the point where I think it's going to be comfortable fit for myself, then I'll join it together and I'll get back at that point. If you're making this for somebody else, just have them measure 
that circumference, like from the back of their lower back of their head, around their ears, up to their forehead, and get that that uh, measurement. And then make sure that your hat is that measurement without really pulling it to its str- st- uh, extent. You know what I'm saying? You want to have a little bit of give there. This way it'll fit and it'll be like a custom fit. All right, so I will be back in a minute. I'm just going to keep going on this. All right, I'm just popping in here for a hot sec to give you a little tip. Um, I've gotten to this point thus far, and you can see that's what one side looks like. I consider this the front side, and then this is what the back side looks like. And here's where I had this um, stitch marker. What I'm going to do is take the stitch marker off and pull it up closer to the top. The reason I'm doing that is because this makes it so much easier for someone like me with a simple simple mind. Um, it just makes it easier. They don't have to look and say, oh, that's the front stitch, that's the back stitch. So I know that all the loops are on this side. So I pulled it up higher because when it's in the bottom here, I've got to like stop and look and see where it is on either side. And it does tend to twist and curl, so it makes it a little complicated. So I recommend you move your at least one time up, you move your um, stitch marker up, unless you can look really quickly and understand what's the back and front. All right, putting you back on hold. All righty, so I have made this long enough to fit comfortably with a little bit of give around my own head. Now, if I were making this for somebody else that's got a little bigger head, I could judge from my head that I need to add a few rows or if it's for a smaller head then you know decrease a few rows and have it tight around my head so you can use your own head size once you know the people that you're making these for you can use your own uh, head as a as a judge but isn't that beautiful how the the colors work up this is really a very pretty yarn I'm very happy with it also too um like I like to use like the novelty yarns and I didn't put it in this one because it's too, you know, be too much for a tutorial, but I will also pair up a thin eyelash or feather or funky kind of uh, yarn just to spruce up. If I was using a single color yarn, then that kind of gives it a little bit of a whatever special thing and it kind of a fur, fur rim. But this has a lot of stuff going on in the colorway by itself, so it doesn't really need that. And it's also a darker color, so, um, you know, I, I think it, this could go, this is, not that anything isn't, but this is very gender neutral if you were making it for a boy or girl or whatever, you know. Not that that should matter. Okay, so now we're at the point, this being the front, the right side, that being the back. Okay, what I like to do here, and you can you you don't have to do any of this. This is just how I do things. I'm just sharing this with you. But what I like to do here, just to clean up this edge, if you want that to be cleaned, is I'm at the last of the row. I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to go back and just do a single crochet, but I'm doing a loose single crochet. And I'm kind of like, when I pull this up, I'm pulling, see how I'm pulling that stitch up and then pulling it through? instead of doing like this, this way, where that's going to be tight, I hold it this way. It just gives it a little more give. So definitely, just going to, definitely, yeah, I'm just going to go around here with a single crochet. I won't go too fast. And I just find, like, there's a hole there, there's a stitch. I had a hard time trying to figure out where the stitches were, but I found that if you kind of follow the little holes, Follow the holes, and you'll make it there to the end. And if you do do this, and it's maybe a half double or double crochet where you got more more loops or holes in there, you'll see that when you're going along that the rim part is flaring out or tightened in that you either didn't go into enough holes or you went into too many. And that's how I've judged it. Again, I, I've, not, I've never learned conventionally on how to do these things these some of the, and these tips are you know things that I've just picked up along the way or figured out on my own I I'm not taking it away from anybody 
that I learned from. It's just been so darn long, I don't remember who it was. It might have been a tutorial or somebody I know showed me, whatever, or just kind of came. I just try to find the easiest and simplest way to get from point A to point B in the least amount of tucking in your ends. All right, so we're coming up to the, speaking of the tucking in the ends, we're coming up to this. Now, the way I've done this, the tag, is here it could have been here it could you know it could have been on either side but we're, we're here so let's go into that next hole whoops sorry about that and there's our single crochet see that right there I'm gonna go into that and pull up and I'm also gonna add chain one all right so now we have see how that just kind of cleans up that edge Personally, I think it's nice. And I don't do this on every hat. Sometimes I like that rigid, raw edge. Oh, geez. Hold on. All right, sorry for that. Scruff Masters protecting the family by barking at people that are driving down the main road. Okay, so now we're at the edge. And this is where we went into that back loop. So I don't know if you see the um, scruff. You see the V all along there, but we're going to go into that V. We're going to actually go into the same space that we went into when we started it. The important part here is, and I apologize for the animals, the important part here is you're going to put the right sides together. Hold on, I'm going to put you on hold again. All right, crocheting with animals. So we're going to put the right side, the side that you want to be on the outside that's showing everybody. We're going to put those right sides together. So that's where it leaves us. Now it could leave you on the other side, but on this side here, we did that one, chained one. So now we're going to go, and the cat is playing with the yarn. Oh my God. Anybody want any animals? All right, so here's the, the chain that I put in. And I'm going to go in this very last loop. Now you see this is the back side, so we're crocheting this on the back side. And we're going to go into that very last loop. Pull it through. You could do a slip stitch. I prefer a chain because I'm going to tuck in that edge, that tail. Then we're going to go to the next one. So we're really going into the same loop as we did when we started. We're just on the other side. And then here's that next chain. See the V's? But this time we're going to hold that tail down. Pull our yarn through. And you want to make these a little bit tighter, not m massive tight, but tight enough where it's not going to spread out, you know, where you're not going to see the stitches. Then to the next one, and I have the, the tail here, and then I'm going into that next, that next loop. I know this is a little tough because it's a dark colored yarn. And then bring it up, pull it through, and then go to the next. Go under that V, got both stitches, go under the next V. Pull it through, single crochet, and then to the next one. And to the next one, pull it through. And see how we, we're tying this in as we go? Then the next one. So you can count these and you should have seven if I did the math correctly now here's the last one so we're gonna go in back here remember this one was closer to the edge because we did a single crochet around this one's gonna be back a little farther so there's that one that one pull it through and I give this one a little bit of a tug and now take it turn it inside out, I pull my hook out, and we've tucked in the, we've tucked in that tag, the end, and we've closed that up to make a rim. And now we could take this out so we don't forget and put the hat on and say, what's this cold plastic thing doing against my head? All right, so there, there's the big, that's, there's your rim. Now you could, if, if you wanted, and what I have done and showed in other videos is if you made this longer or even the way it is, uh, whatever width you like, you could go at this point 
and I, I took my my uh, hook out because I want this to be able to go in this direction. And I work in the round. I don't go back and forth. But what you could do here is if you want to make this earmuffs, you just go and I would do a chain here and then I'm going to just do it, okay? And I'm tucking that in underneath. And now I'm doing the same thing I did on the other side is go into, excuse me, we're playing tug of war with the yarn and the cat. And just go around. And again, I'm not making this too tight because I want this to have give. And go around with the single crochet on this side. So you're really cleaning up this, this rim. And this could be right here, once you're done all the way around, could be a finished project and be earmuffs. And these earmuffs can be used just as an earmuff when you're going outside, or you can wear them underneath a hat just for extra warmth if you're going to be outside for any period of time in the winter where it's cold out, up, like up here. And you just literally just go around. And again, I, I pull that up so it gives it a little bit of I'm in, in the process of showing you, I lost my grip. And this could be a headband right here. And you can make this fancy if you made it thicker. Uh, if you made it thicker, you could, you know, scrunch one side up. You know, you could do all kinds of stuff. You can make little flowers or whatever little applique type thing and stitch them onto here to make it you know, purdy. But I'm going to make a hat. Actually, to be honest with you, earmuffs would have been perfectly fine for the set because I've already got the hoodie. So, but I, I want to make a hat. All right, so now we're at the, we're at the join. I'm going to go in here. And then the very first stitch, we did that chain one. I'm going to go into the, into the both parts of the V grab my yarn and instead of doing a chain I'm going to do a slip stitch and I'm going to give it a tug so there there's your headband you could stop right there if you wanted but I'm going to keep on going all right so now the fun part about this one is is I have no idea what I'm going to do next and what's great about that is you could take these hats and use them as stitch samplers because now you could do whatever stitch you want every round. So if you want to learn a new stitch, so let's see, let's do the first round. I'm going to chain two. I'm going to do a double crochet. So a double crochet is yarn over and I'm going to go into this, the next hole, pull it through, go through two, go through two. And all right, we're just going to do this whole row as double crochet. So yarn over, go to the next V, pull through two, pull through two. Let's just do a whole row of double crochets. Two, two. I'm not spending a lot of time showing you stitches because that if you if you need to learn the stitches it would be best to learn through a stitch tutorial. I don't have any, I don't think. I did all right here, let's show you the screw up here. All right, I, I see here that when I was doing this stitch, I didn't grab all the yarn. I don't think that's gonna be a problem, but just to make sure. I'm going to go through the part that I missed and then go through, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to loop over. I'm going to go through the part that I missed and then go through, grab my yarn and make sure I pull that yarn through that piece. So I'm just grabbing that in case I don't want it to come, come apart. So that's just precaution. So go through both the V's. And again, these are just double crochets. I, I wished I knew how to fast forward on the editing part of this, but 
You could fast forward on your end. But we're almost there. I'll put you on pause. All right, so I'm back to the join. And I looped, looped over, going through that stitch there, that V, pulling it up. Now I'm at the top of the double crochet, so I'm going to look at one, two, because I did a chain two. So on the very top of the chain two, I'm going to grab that, get that out of the way, grab that V stitch. Make sure there's some yarn underneath. Yarn over. This can be a little bit tight. Pull it through and then go back into a slip stitch. Give it a nudge. So there's a there's a double crochet and it's twisting down a little bit, but that don't worry about it. Just it gives it a little bit of looseness. So basically, at this point here, instead of me going through and making the whole hat, at this point here, you just figure out whatever crazy stitch you want to do on every row. Okay, the key is, is when you get to a few more stitches, you're going to start decreasing. So whatever stitch you're doing at that point, just decrease every third stitch, which a decrease, I'm just going to show it to you here and then I'll pull it out, but let's, let's just do that. So if we want to do, say we're doing half double, so it's one loop pull it through the V and instead of going two and two you just pull through all three so this is a half double and the next stitch I want to decrease so that every fourth one I'm going to decrease so I'm yarning over go through pull it through go through the next one pull it through and now I've got four things on the hook instead of three pulling that up and see how that decreases it so then you know here's one two, three, and like the first round of decreases every fourth. So now I'm going to do another decrease. I'm going to go through the first, I yarned over, go through the first V, and then just go through the next V. So we've got four loops. And there's another decrease. So there's two decreases in there, and see, you hardly notice. So you could pretty much do that with any stitch, I think. I mean, there's a lot of stitches that I don't know, which I'm going to learn this, this year, too, learn some more stitches. And I have, might I might do a series of learn along with me type things. But, um, yeah, so then that would be that row. So we would we'd come back around, and then maybe the following row, whatever stitch you did, do it again every fourth stitch. And when you get closer to the top, you might go every other stitch. And then I leave... A little bit of a section on the top because to finish it off instead of stitching it all the way because sometimes you get that little bubble I will do a slip knot pull cut the yarn with a tail because I'm going to thread it through and then pull it through so there's a knot and then just kind of weave through the stitches all the way around the opening of the hole and then cinch it tight then sew it up and then tie your pom-pom oh by the way I don't know if I mentioned this on here but I, I don't know if I mentioned this because I did do I started a video and then I didn't have the lighting on so I had to redo it and this pom-pom I got these from Timu just saying I'm impressed it was a whole bag of them I don't remember how much it was a bag of a bunch for a certain amount of money and I, I'm impressed with the quality of those pom-poms and they have the elastic band, so you can put the little button underneath. Or I have a piece of cardboard that I notched out just for now, but I gotta find something, to, a button to put that underneath. But anyway, so yeah, so that's so just keep going along until you figure out where when you put it on your head, you feel like it's gonna be the top part that you wanna uh, start coming in and decreasing. Or if you want it to be slouch, go a little farther and then decrease. Or you can go even farther and then instead of decreasing just loop around and cinch it you know there's a lot of a lot of ways to finish off the top of your hat hat but like again just to reiterate is this is a great way to learn and use new stitches on something other than a big blanket or whatever you could just really practice your stitches if you are considering doing a combination of stitches on a larger project like a blanket you can test how they look on a hat because you could bang one of these things these out in you know an hour two hours whatever you know depending on how fast you crochet and how thick the yarn is 
But I hope that was helpful. Um, thank you very much for your patience and your kindness and your support to our channel and watching. And uh, yeah, look out for other unconventional tutorials. All right. Bye-bye for now.